So as I record this, it is 2.39 on the 17th of December 2019. This is the German time zone. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, again German time, I will be seeing Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. So that's just for reference as to where we are in the scheme of things. This film is set to be the finale of the Skywalker saga. So it's set to be something big. So I'm kind of going to give my thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker so far, how it's shaping up. And kind of talk a little bit about The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi while I'm at it. I'm kind of making this video kind of for myself, so I can use it to kind of reference my feelings about it once I have seen the movie. In case this movie were to retroactively change my opinions on certain aspects. This is all just kind of a point of reference. Once again, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, and you can get four months free with a three-year subscription by using my discount code. Everything you need is in the description below so check it out. All right, onwards. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty, I would call myself a Star Wars fan, sure. I enjoy the Star Wars movies. Now, I'm not an expert on Star Wars though. That's just the thing you gotta understand here is a lot of Star Wars fans can tell you exactly how the Force is supposed to work. They can tell you how maths works on Mustafar. They can tell you the entire extensive life story of Emperor Palpatine. I'm not one of those guys. I'm, I'm the guy that goes into these movies wanting to see an entertaining story and see it all play out and pay off in a nice way. Which is again a point of reference because I'm gonna want different things from these movies than other Star Wars fans. It's not enough for me for them to make sense. It's not enough for me for them to be logical. I want them to be stories that pay off properly. So right off the bat I'm going to say that I am looking forward to seeing The Rise of Skywalker but I'm not expecting to like it. Because if I'm being completely honest, I'm not the biggest fan of Disney's sequel trilogy so far. Now that isn't me trying to impart on these movies that they've committed some kind of a crime. This isn't me trying to say that, oh, J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson are hack idiots who couldn't make a Star Wars movie to save their lives. The truth is, with the different forms of the media and even just George Lucas' own visions himself, there is no major constant through line as to what Star Wars can really be. So I think the best way to kind of go into these movies is to sit down and say, okay, this is this director's turn with the Star Wars franchise. This is what they're going to do. Now, I think that is an issue when you're trying to kind of set up an overarching story. The original Star Wars trilogy came from three different directors, but its narrative was still strong. It didn't feel like there was any kind of improvisation going on. With the prequel trilogy, also I will say it felt pretty cohesive. The quality of those movies took a nosedive, but it felt like there was always a clear end point in sight. It felt like it was definitely going somewhere at all times. And I'm not just saying that retrospectively. We have the story of Anakin Skywalker, a kid with the potential to be extremely powerful. And obviously the Jedi want him on their side. And it's kind of this tug of war between the Jedi and the Sith to make sure that this kid goes their way. Mistakes are made, he ends up on the dark side, ends up helping Palpatine forge his empire. With the original trilogy, it's this sort of battle of good versus evil. Luke needs to gather up his resolve and defeat Darth Vader and the Emperor. So with the original trilogy, you've got the battle of good versus evil. The Renegade versus the Imperial. We stack impossible odds against these characters that cannot possibly face them themselves. The ending would always have to be that they would take it down. The defeat of the Empire. Good triumphs over evil against all else. With the prequels, we've got this child exhibiting immense power power and he's living on an immensely polarizing political landscape and it's a tug of war. So maybe Rise of Skywalker will prove me wrong here but what exactly is the narrative through line of the sequel trilogy so far. What could possibly give satisfying resolution to all this? It begins with The Force Awakens, where we meet Rey, a young lady exhibiting tremendous amounts of power, much like Anakin did. Ben Solo, the son of Leia and Han Solo, has gone to the dark side and is on a quest to complete what Darth Vader started, resurrect the Empire and establish their order on the galaxy. He builds a Death Star, the rebels shoot it down, but it's always implied from that first film that the through line of this is going to be 
redeeming Ben Solo. He seems pretty aware of the stranglehold that the dark side has over him and he's trying his best to fight it, but the dark side just has far too much power over him, causing him to kill his father and continuing to wreak havoc on the rest of the galaxy. Now I'm gonna say this right now, I think The Force Awakens is actually really good. The story it sets up is virtually exactly the same as what was set up in the original trilogy. We have an unstoppable, cruel villain who has blood ties to the heroes, and the goal is not to kill him, but to redeem him. But it also very much sets up what the prequels did as well. Rey exhibits an insane amount of power, and she's living in an extremely, intensely, politically polarizing landscape. However, the tug of war thing between the Jedi and the Sith isn't really there in this case, as Rey's resolve is very much on the side of the Resistance, and she wants to get the map to go and find Luke Skywalker to help them. Right, so if I'm being completely honest, The Force Awakens is really good in my opinion. It does pretty much everything you'd expect a Star Wars movie to do, and it doesn't go much further than that. But the thing is, it's Star Wars, but it's new. It's Star Wars, but it's just a bit different. It's good trying to overcome evil. Star Wars The Force Awakens basically just looks at everything that ever worked about Star Wars and rolls it up into a ball and says, here you go, here's the new version. It's fresher, it's updated, you've got some new characters in there, enjoy. Then The Last Jedi comes along, and I think it's inherently obvious that they basically said, oh god, this is too similar to those previous movies. What previous movies? The Star Wars movies! You mean to tell me the Star Wars movies are too similar to the Star Wars movies? So no, I'm not gonna go out of my way to say The Last Jedi doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna try and say the science of it doesn't work. I'm not gonna try and say, oh, the Force can't do that. I'm not gonna try and say, well, that's out of character, that's not on form. There's not really anything wrong with The Last Jedi. I understand a lot of people's main bone of contention was how they went with Luke Skywalker, making him reclusive, and the reasoning behind that. But to be honest, that doesn't really hold very much water. Luke renounced the Jedi because he understood that the stronger the Jedi become, the stronger the dark side becomes with it, and it's just not worth the trouble anymore. The Force needs balance, so he can't just go partying it up like a Jedi, he has to kind of retire and fade away into obscurity. And when Rey's all like, no, but you're Luke Skywalker, you're the greatest guy ever, you're the savior, He's like, you are aware I tried to attempt to murder a child, right? Now this is not that out of character, because for starters he stopped himself. Had Luke Skywalker killed Ben Solo right there and then, it would have eliminated a lot of suffering for everybody, but he didn't have it in him to do it. But for some it's kind of enough that he almost did, but consider this, Luke Skywalker is not the legendary light side champion, and he never really was. His goal was always to redeem Darth Vader, but how many times did he almost willingly kill him? There's a lot you can kind of refer to when backing this up. And there's a YouTube user called Neryl who's got a pretty airtight argument for all of this. The Last Jedi really doesn't get anything wrong, but I don't like it. I really do not like this movie at all. It didn't ruin my childhood. It doesn't ruin the characters. It doesn't ruin the force. What I don't like about it is just the execution of it. I don't like the pacing. I don't like the storytelling. I feel like just so little is actually achieved in this two and a half hour movie that kind of boasts twists and revelations galore, but just doesn't deliver on them. This film just feels like a massive information dump. And because of that, it's just exhausting to sit through. But if it just committed to some of the twists it tries to boast, I, I would have have been better. As a film, it's just, it's like a film saying, oh, we're gonna kill these characters off, but then we're not gonna kill them, but maybe we'll kill them later on, but then, nah, we're not gonna do that. Oh, you're gonna get answers to these big burning questions in this film series. But nah, we're not, we're not gonna do them now. We'll do them later on. We'll let the next movie do that. We'll explain that thing properly later on. I think the epitome of this is Luke training Rey about the balance of the Force. And we tease Rey going dark, but then nothing comes of it, and it's never mentioned again. Now, in the teaser trailer for The Rise of Skywalker, we do see a dark ray, but if it's not touched upon in this movie, The Last Jedi, then it doesn't save The Last Jedi. A movie that is all build-up can build up to a next movie and that next movie be good, but the film that's just nothing but build-up will always be nothing but build-up, and I don't find nothing but build-up, but with no payoff, very entertaining. I guess there's one little payoff in The Last Jedi, and that's that we see the last of Captain Phasma, and that is painfully underwhelming. She basically serves to round off Finn's arc with him going to Canto Bite to find a Master Codebreaker. And it all leads him back to the First Order and he must finally confront Captain Phasma. And she goes down insanely easily. And just, I don't really have much to say about Finn and Rose's storyline on Canto Bite. Other than that, I really didn't like it. It was just 
too cheesy for me. It kind of proved that we hadn't really learned much from The Phantom Menace. And it's just one storyline too many to shove into this film. And I get why it's there. It's there so that A, we're not leaving Finn in the dark for the entire movie. And B, it's kind of a light relief for how heavy the rest of this film is. I mean, we've also got Poe Dameron struggling with the kind of the reshuffle of power within the Resistance. And yeah, that story kind of works for what it is, but I just find it frustrating. And I know that a lot of people will applaud it for that, but I just, I that's not my idea of a good time with a Star Wars movie. The rest of this movie is kind of the tug of war thing like what we had with Anakin Skywalker. It chooses to kind of follow that, except rather than doing this with Rey the Almighty, we're doing it with Kylo Ren the Almighty. On one side we've got Rey trying to pull him to the light, on the other side we've got Snoke trying to pull him to the dark. But this film does something a bit differently. Kylo Ren kills Snoke halfway into the movie, which would mean that the tug of war has been won, right? Well, no. This is the equivalent in telling a story about a tug of war where <laughs> the bad side drops the rope but then the rope just decides to start pulling itself. As we do get one revelation about Kylo Ren, which I also consider to be one of the stronger sides of this movie. He's not a Jedi. He's not a Sith. He's not interested in being either of those things. He is no longer someone that is controlled by the dark side of the Force. He simply just wants to rule the universe because he's a shit. And worse yet, he's selfish. He wants Rey there to help him with it. See, now this is good. This is good stuff. And the film ends with Luke Skywalker taunting Kylo Ren. Again, fair enough. But it's just so much that's off about this film, such as, like, Rey doesn't really seem to be a part of this movie. She feels like a, a hero character that's just kind of been stuck in there. Now, I'm not saying this because, oh, she's a Mary Sue because she's got too much power and stuff. I understand why that is the way that it is. The reason is she doesn't really properly react to the events of this movie. She's just been aboard the First Order throne room and witnessed Snoke killing thousands and thousands of people, killing her friends, killing good people, and then literally a moment later, she's flying the Millennium Falcon with a big smile on her face, all smiles and cheery, woohoo! And there's a lot of stuff like that in this movie, and she just does not feel like a part of this movie because of that. And because of that, we can't really garner a connection with her. If you've got a film where the main hero of it is someone we cannot connect to in any way, shape, or form, then that is a failure. And the overall outcome is kind of a subtraction of what Star Wars was before. Rey started this film wanting to know who she was and her place in the universe. Kylo Ren started this film as a tortured victim of the dark side. And the overall outcome of this film, the overall reshuffle, is that Rey is nobody with no past, and Kylo Ren is just a bad person. And that for me is just too much subtraction. However, it could set up for a decent, nicely broken down sequel, which will focus on Rey finally, finally taking down Kylo Ren, and being more persuaded than ever to have to kill him. Redemption is off the cards. So surely that third movie could build off of this in a really cool way. This could be the payoff to all that unsatisfying stuff from The Last Jedi, right? And the main villain of this movie is no longer subservient. He's the top dog. We can use that as a launch pad for Kylo Ren to truly be his own beast separate from Darth Vader, right? Kylo Ren is now the main villain. Well, it appears that it hasn't worked out that way, as the rise of Skywalker is bringing back Emperor Palpatine as the main villain. And from the looks of some of these trailers, it looks as though there might be a chance at redemption for Kylo Ren after all, as there appears to be a shot or two of them fighting side by side. So The Force Awakens set up a Star Wars sequel series that very much echoes what everybody loved about the originals. The Last Jedi completely reshuffles it with no payoff whatsoever, and then it looks like The Rise of Skywalker is just going to ignore that and just not pay that off, but instead just bring back a fan favorite villain. And this is the thing, the outcome here like, I'm not asking for it to be predictable, but there isn't a narrative through line. But as well as that, I gotta admit, the treatment of the original cast of Star Wars has been kind of, dare I say, sadistic. So let's kind of start from the beginning here. Han Solo and Princess Leia, after confessing love, are now parted, have been separated for years, after their firstborn son turned out to be the next Darth Vader, who then went on to kill Han Solo, right in front of Chewbacca, whose consolation prize was kinda Rey, a character who in two movies he still has yet to properly get to know. Meanwhile, Luke Skywalker is overwhelmed with grief and shame after he almost attempted to murder his nephew, 
albeit with good intentions in mind. And then he also dies from just kind of forcing it too hard, I guess. So Leia's now lost the love of her life, her brother, and her son is the next Darth Vader. And then we discover that Palpatine, the main threat of the original trilogy and the prequels, who was ceremoniously defeated by a redeemed Darth Vader, is still alive and has been pulling the strings behind all of this. Therefore meaning the threat that Luke, Han and Leia fought with all of their resolve to take down was not taken down. Their victory they celebrated was not a victory. It was simply a brief hiatus. The only thing, the only thing that could even remotely, even, even remotely, remotely, save this from being the most depressing, sadistic way of treating a generation's heroes would be if we had Leia witness Ben Solo's return to the light side and the end, the final end of Emperor Palpatine. And even then, that's only one character getting to see the better. And sure, you can talk all you want about Force Ghosts, but it still just doesn't sit right with me. I understand some folks have got to be left on the curb in some aspects, otherwise it just becomes like a cheesy sort of reunion special where everyone's exactly as they were before and hey ho, nothing's achieved. But guys, that's a little too depressing. So that's why overall I'm just not a big fan of the new Star Wars trilogy so far. But I wonder if The Rise of Skywalker is going to change any of that. Now there are of course people that use criticism or a disliking of these films as an excuse to act like barbaric pigs, leveling abuse at actors involved who are just doing their jobs and resorting to name calling without any kind of regard for the kind of effect that can have. And my favorite thing lately is these kinds of people have been releasing all kinds of stuff saying like, oh yeah, the stars hate The Last Jedi, even though they just kind of criticized it, even though they just said it didn't really kind of pull together properly. But it's like, no, they hate Ryan Johnson. Mark Hamill's on our side because of what he said about The Last Jedi. Interest in the rise of Skywalk has plummeted. Disney are running scared. We've won. The fandom menace has won. Like, please do not paint me with the same stroke as those people because they are freaks. Like, they're, they're living in a fucking dream world. No amount of box office numbers are going to cure the delusion that's going on with those absolute sociopaths. I think what the new Star Wars trilogy set out to do was admirable. But I think if the result of these films so far was according to some kind of plan they had in the first place, it doesn't come across. It can't have been a particularly strong plan. So my expectations for Rise of Skywalker are virtually non-existent. But... I hope to enjoy it. I hope you all enjoy it on that matter. Well, what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Because you could get a way better costume from Zentai Zone. Check out their range of custom-made, tailored superhero costumes. Ridiculously good quality, value, and customization. Link is in the description below, as well as my coupon code channel pup, where you can get a discount off of your purchase. And while you're at it, why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy Dan from New Blood Dan's Workshop? You can contact him via the link in the description below. Seriously guys, you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.